name is Lacey, a speak with some fat hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing an anti-haul, and it feels like it's a long time coming because as the new year has begun, and there are all these new releases, I've been not very excited about makeup lately. I will say, no, that's a lie. I'm ex I'm still excited about makeup. I'm actually on a blush journey right now. Expect a video about that coming soon. It's on my to film list. But so many new makeup releases just haven't caught my attention or have caused me to have a negative reaction. There's makeup that already exists that I'm excited to try. But new stuff, not so much. You know, yeah, are we on the same page? I know you all know what an anti-haul is, but just in case you don't, in a regular haul, you talk about all the things you've bought and why. In an anti-haul, you talk about all the things you're not going to buy and why. This style of anti-haul was popularized by Kimberly Clark, and I mostly do them for myself. And if you happen to get something out of it, then that's only a bonus, because I think a lot of us get very tempted by new makeup releases. There's a lot of FOMO, that word is thrown around a lot. I think a lot of companies prey upon people and hope to cause them FOMO. But I know just in general, a lot of makeup being released at any given time. So, Antihels help me. I know they help a lot of other people. It's fun to shit talk makeup every once in a while because makeup is an inanimate object. It doesn't have feelings. Companies don't have feelings. They just want to do business with you. They just want your money. Disclaimer time. These are things that I don't like and the various reasons why I don't like them and I don't want to buy them. If you have bought them, if you love them, that's great. We're two different people. We have different tastes and different priorities with life and with spending. It is not personal. I am not anti-hauling you. I am anti-hauling stuff. Do not get in my comments and tell me why I'm a dumb bitch because I don't want to spend money on stuff that you think that I should spend my money on. That's not how any of this works. And if you are tempted at any point to write me that comment about how dumb I am because whatever brand or whatever product is so wonderful, then the brands have won at that point and I don't really know what to say anymore. So just know I won't even read the comment anyway. You're wasting your breath. I am mostly going to be citing my friend Trend Mood. I, just not, I don't know Trend Mood personally. I just, I rely on her Instagram a lot. I also am going to use a little bit of Beauty News Official. So both of those Instagram accounts will be linked down below. Going through my Instagram. Wait, there's a shopping bag section of Instagram now? You can buy things directly off Instagram now? Ew, anti-hauling that. Going off of my saved tab on Instagram. I will say I have missed the release date for a lot of these things. So if I wasn't able to save you from impending doom, I do apologize. But if you are teetering on the edge of impending doom, maybe this can help you, I don't know. So I think the first thing that I want to anti-haul because I have seen this in person and I was not impressed, the new ABH Amrezy eyeshadow palette. I, I cannot say enough how unimpressed I am by this because this color story exists so many times over in eyeshadow palette land by now. It is a pop of blue palette. We've gone over pops of blue on this channel. We've gone over pops of blue constantly nonstop just in the beauty sphere. If you cover up that blue, it becomes just a neutral warm palette. I don't like that it has two pressed glitters in it. To me, that was especially the deal breaker because in person, those pressed glitters really cheapen the product to me. It kind of almost makes it feel like kids makeup, like Claire's makeup. And this feels very much like an ABH's best of palette. I think if you have multiple ABH palettes, if you have Norvina, if you have Soft Glam, you've pretty much covered your basis with these cut with these colors. And I'm not enough of like an Amrezy fan. To be perfectly honest, I don't really know who she is. I have the Amrezy highlighter and I'm glad that I own it because it's fantastic. But this palette adds nothing of value, I think, to my life personally, and arguably probably to eyeshadow palettes as a whole. Something else that has happened <laughs> that I need to talk about anti-hauling, I have to anti-haul the Tati Blendiful sponges. I will say I will give Tati credit. I think it's cool that she did something so different. I think everyone expects these influencer brands to just be eyeshadow palette brands, which she did really nice show palette. This at least is something that is different that we can't say a lot of other brands are doing. However, we can say that beauty puffs have always existed. In fact, dare I say I have a dupe. This is a Sephora puff that I bought 
I don't even know how long ago I keep the little bag just so I have like a place to store it. And I'm sure that this would do everything the Blendiful sponge would do. I don't, I don't even know what I paid for it. I'm sure it wasn't much. I know people have found dupes for it on Amazon. A lot of puffs exist in the world. I know there's also a problem with it tearing right now. And I will be honest and say I wasn't happy with Tati's video about it because Tati's video almost, not even almost, it came off to me a little rude and condescending. Her response video to people who have had alleged tears in their, their blendifuls. And I know a few people who have bought the Blendifuls and have experienced tearing despite using it as per directed, for lack of a better term. So $18 for two sponges when I'm sure I probably didn't spend much on this one. I'll pass. I know people have been happy with it. It's just, there's nothing about it that personally appeals to me. Something else <laughs> that, I, that I'm actually shocked I didn't get more tags in this. I think only like one person tagged me in this. The new Urban Decay Wired Press Pigment Palette. I, again, will give them credit for kind of going back to their roots, almost, so to say, because the electric palette is so iconic and classic. And I think a lot of people have passed along their electric palettes at this time, so it's kind of smart timing, because electric palette's fairly old and people should pass along. I still own mine, but you get into that in a second. And it has some shades from the electric palette. It's kind of bulky, old school packaging. I'm not here for the packaging. I feel like we've moved past that kind of chunky packaging personally at least I have oh I see why it's segmented it's segmented into for face body and eye and then just for face and body I don't think you need to go that far I think you can just mark it on the packaging somewhere the reason why I'm very like I'm good about this is because once upon a time the, the electric palette was one of a kind there weren't a lot of things like that especially pressed pigments are a dime a dozen now at the time when it released Everybody was like, oh my god, like, pfft. I think everybody and their mom probably has a rainbow palette that they love, that they rely on. I know I have rainbow shades that I'm happy with. And in terms of Urban Decay, I recently broke out my electric palette to play with just to see if I should get rid of it, if I still like it, you know, all that jazz. And it doesn't perform as well as I remember the hype surrounding it. Does that make sense? Like, I found it to be a little patchy and dusty. Again, it's an old palette. It could just be that it's old and it's not going to perform the same. But I have very bright, vivid colors like that that just work so much better. And just as a whole, I'm not that jazzed about Urban Decay's formula. As a whole, I get their eyeshadow palette formula across the board. Naked Honey, I really enjoyed, but everything else is just kind of meh. And I don't find their eyeshadow formula to be worth the price. And just in general, I think you could get these colors at a more affordable price in a better formula. And I expect that this will go on sale because all Urban Decay palettes go on sale. Easy decision for me to pass on that. Another thing that I think, like, okay, so the, Ur the Urban Decay Wired palette is something that I could have seen myself really wanting a couple years ago, like 2016, maybe 2017. Another one that I think I would have loved in that same mindset and that same time period is the new Sugar Pill Capsule Collection, the pink edition. So there's only one palette now and just the way that they're naming it leads a lot of us to believe that this is the first of many capsule palettes because I imagine it was not cheap to make the component for this and they're gonna wanna get their, mo their money's worth by making a bunch of palettes in this component. This is too little too late for me in terms of Sugar Pill. I think once upon a time, Sugar Pill was my be all end all for colorful shadows and after I got that pro, that their pro pan palette that cost me an arm and a leg to get and the stars had to align for me to get all the shades that I wanted. Ever since that, nothing Sugar Pill has done has impressed me. I did end up getting that smaller little kind of pastel -y palette that came out, the fun size palette. But I just, I don't know. I don't like the mix of the sizes of the pans. I feel like it's a little random. I think pastels are the new it thing. I think frosty, pastel-y, light, ethereal eye looks is very on trend right now. So I get this. It's cute packaging, but I don't know personally where it would fit into my collection because I just don't need it. I have these colors so many times over. I do think the packaging's cute and at least different and it suits Sugar Pill as a brand. But I think if you have some Sugar Pill shadows already, whether it's the Pro Pans 
Or if you did get the fun size palette, then you probably are covered for these colors because they seem pretty dupable amongst sugar pill shadows. No for me. Another no for me, even though I got tagged in this a thousand times. I don't even know if this is coming back. So as we speak, this sold out and I don't know if they're going to restock it. They probably will. The new ColourPop Sailor Moon collection. The two lip bundles look very similar. Almost indistinguishable in swatches. The blushes are cute, but would I care about them if they didn't have the imprint in them? Absolutely not. And the palette is such a hard pass for me because where is the depth in this palette? This is truly like a light frosty with a wash of some color palette, which I just don't need. And you can all cancel me in the comments below. I'm not a Sailor Moon person. I never watched it growing up, so I don't have that nostalgic tie to it. Every ColourPop palette dupes another ColourPop palette, in my opinion, as someone who has owned a lot of ColourPop palettes. And I just don't need it, and I know it's not available everywhere, and I know everyone lost their minds about the collection, but if you cover up the part of it that is Sailor Moon, do you want the inside? That's the important question. For me, I would be basing this purchase solely on the inside, and I don't like the inside, so I don't need the inside or the outside. More big news. Oh man. The new Jeffree Star collection. What is this called? The Blood Sh wait, no. The new color to the Blood Sugar family. The Bloodlust collection. Is it the Bloodlust palette? I believe so. The Bloodlust palette. I will say this to me is the least appealing product. Like, so say what you will about Jeffree Star. We talk about this every fucking anti-haul. Just, just like removing him and all of his controversies and all the reasons why you shouldn't support him from this collection. Looking at the makeup itself. One, the big palette thing. The big fuzzy velvet palette thing. What the actual hell is that? The idea of touching a velvet palette, like reaching into my drawer and like touching, I don't know, something about that gives me like a uh feeling. Like a very like uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't find that enjoyable. That's just me. That could just be my head wrapping myself around the texture. I'll pass. The colors of the eyeshadow don't read like purple drama. Like that's what I expected. I expected this to be like a purple goth dream. This reads Easter to me. Again, very much on this light wisp of color Easter ethereal bandwagon that is happening right now. Something about the color story turns me off. Not quite as much as conspiracy turned me off. But as the yellow, the one green that looks exactly like the metallic green in Alien, or like chartreuse gold, I should say. The red, I get why it's there because there's a purple in um, Blood Sugar, so it's almost like it flip-flops. But I think it was Teresa who said this is more a pink palette than a purple palette. The packaging itself looks like a Harry Potter chocolate frog candy packaging. That was my first impression of it. And I know I'm going to have the same critique that everybody else has, but there is absolutely no depth in this palette. There are not that many dark, deep dark shades that would work to deepen a lot of colors. I feel like I could get three maybe kind of looks from this and they would all relatively look the same. I don't know. I'm interested to see Annette's makeup corner do her 10 looks because I swear Annette can make garbage look good. But, <laughs> but I just personally don't get very inspired by this. I also think if you own any of the previous light wispy pastel palettes that have come before it, like the ColourPop pastel palettes for example, I own both purple nine pen palettes from ColourPop, the true purple one and the lilac one, I'm good. Like I could dupe this palette so easily despite everything else about Jeffree Star, let's say. The glosses are really interesting to me, especially sickening because it's almost like a blackened purple, but I'm truly, I'm, my office had to rearrange to fit my desk and I have a drawer of lip glosses right now. And let me just um, pull out consecutive purple glosses. I'm not done. I am like so good for purple glosses. Still going. Still going. Oh hey look I wanted like a darker purple got it. Still going. So I think you can um see my my point here that I'm like I purple lip glosses aren't new to the market either. 
So everything is dupable. I think that's the theme of this. I'm just gonna put all these down. The theme of this anti-haul is that everything is dupable. And I think that's my problem going into 2020 is there is no new color story because it's all been done. There's no new anything that excites me because I just have it all. And I don't know if that's a me problem. If I've reached that point where it's just, I've covered every basis I could possibly have. But like, I think now it comes down to are textures interesting enough? And I don't think the textures of the Jeffree Star palettes are going to be interesting enough to worth, to merit, you know, spending money on them either. The, that purple highlighter, the new um, Extreme Frost, which I'm personally confused as how the Extreme Frost differs from the Supreme Frost. Is he no longer making the Supreme Frost? Why does it have to be $50 if you get rid of the gaudy awful box that it comes in can we cut down some price because who the hell is displaying these Jeffree Star highlighters don't spend money just to display makeup what the fuck is that about the new mirrors whatever that seems to be his thing the mini lipstick bundles like that's kind of cool I guess I like the the idea of offering lips as a mini but I don't know who even wears liquid lipsticks anymore. Sorry if I just flinched. A ladybug scared the shit out of me. Jeffree Star unleashed an army of ladybugs to silence me, I guess, in this time. Overall, very disappointing. I feel like, again, another criticism I'm going to have that a lot of people have had is that I don't see the eyeshadows, to flip back to the eyeshadows, working on a lot of people with deeper skin tones. It seems to me like there's a common thread. Um, Jeffree Star not caring about people of color, but if I say that, the internet's gonna explode. I don't know why I just turned into McMurray from Letterkenny. If you talk about the lack of inclusivity within Jeffree Star's makeup, people seem to lose their fucking minds in defense of Jeffree Star, so I don't know what that's about either. I don't know. Underwhelmed, unimpressive. It almost feels like Jeffree Star is a parody of himself at this point. George and I were talking about that when she came to visit, how almost like... For instance, RuPaul doesn't get in drag unless he's getting paid anymore, and RuPaul kind of seems like a parody of himself at this point. It almost seems like Jeffree Star Cosmetics is a parody of itself at this point, because the packaging is insane for this, for no reason. And I'm not here for it. Don't eat or not gonna buy it. We gotta talk about some Morphe stuff. There's always some Morphe stuff. I'm including this in this anti-haul because it fits into this whole pastel ethereal bullshit nonsense and I was very tempted to get this palette, I'm not gonna lie. The 35i Icy Fantasy Artistry palette. This, again, is this wispy, light, pastel-y, ethereal dream. I don't need this and I have pastel colors over and over again in my collection because last summer I went through a pastel phase and I'm not quite out of the phase yet. I'm wearing, obviously, pastel greens today. But I just don't need it, and a spe $25 is not a bad price, but I live quite literally, as we speak, just packed away a huge stack of Morphe 35 palettes that I have been brainwashed by influencers in my life into buying. I just packed them away to get rid of forever, and decluttered out of my collection and out of my life, because I never reach for a palette this big ever. Even if I like the inside of it and I think, oh, what a great color story. I never, my first option is never to reach for that drawer in my, my desk that keeps all of my giant palettes in. I don't know why that is. Probably because it's just so much easier to pull out like a 9 or a 12 pan palette. There's no part of me who needs this. And then we can't talk anti-hauls without Jaclyn Hill's new Morphe collab. <laughs> what, can, what can I say that hasn't already been said about Jaclyn Hill, about Morphe, about how comical it actually is that she got on camera and said, I know everybody thinks that I only make videos to sell, but get ready because I'm about to sell you something, and then quite literally that week sold something. And I know the palette was supposedly leaked, but... I don't know, allegedly, that seems suspicious to me, and I can't prove it again, allegedly, because all of the promo stuff was ready. There was, like, magazine articles that were published, like, the day it was leaked. It seems almost like the leak might have been a strategic way for Jaclyn Hill to not be responsible for having to sell yet another thing to her audience. Like, oh, I couldn't help it this time. It just worked out. Time. I don't know. I tend to not assume the best out of Jaclyn Hill. When it comes to the makeup, before I circle back to why I don't want this palette and why nobody should buy this palette. This feels a year too late, this color story. This 
has been done over and over and over again. And I debated making another video just duping this color story over and over again in my collection the same way I did a highlighter video when her highlighters came out because this kind of sunsetty brown to purple, red to purple color story was so popular, I feel like, last year and the year before. I have so many palettes that dupe this. It's mostly a warm neutral palette with a corner of purple. So if you have a staple warm neutral palette, get some purple singles and you're good. Maybe the reason why it feels a year too late is because, again, allegedly, there may or may not be documents that support that it should have been released a year ago, but who knows. I've heard people like this. I don't know how many people went out and bought it if it was a smash hit, but it seems like a relatively successful launch. It's just, it feels tired. And a lot of these colors, I imagine, swatch very similarly. I'm looking at swatches now, they definitely do. And that means they probably would look very similarly on the eyes. Easy pass for me. I'm sure teenagers are going to eat this shit up. Circling back to Jaclyn Hill as a person though, I'm not going to comment on her weight because I think that's fucked up and I always, whenever I talk about Jaclyn Hill in a video, I think it's one thing if we want to critique her business ethics, her morals, uh, her history of lying, the way that she preys on her audience, her manipulates her audience, all that stuff I think is fair game because a lot of her problems she has created for herself, obviously. But stuff like her weight, her possible alcohol abuse, things that she talked about, her mental health and that she talked about in her video. That's not for me to talk about. That's not for me to speculate on. I think even commenting on those things detracts from the actual fucked up things that she does wrong. I will say though, if you continue to support to buy her products and support her, you're condoning all of the shady things that are legitimately worthy of being criticized. Selling products that can put your customers in harm's way, manipulating people's emotions to feel sorry for you so they'll buy from you. But she gets away with doing that kind of behavior when we turn a blind eye to it because we're distracted by pretty colorful goo that she puts her name on. So I will not be buying anything Jaclyn Hill probably ever, again ever, because I've bought the original Morphe palette and the damn bolt and like champagne pop, so I'm done playing that game. I don't know. I, I cannot believe there's anybody even willing to support Jaclyn Hill at this point, but hey, what do I know? More, more things and people and places and things. <laughs> more people, places and things that I don't want to support. The new Too Faced collection, even the new, the new Too Faced Born This Way collection, I should say. Four highlighter palettes, whatever. Hi I have so many highlighters. Everybody has so many highlighters. You're good. The, I, okay, this is what I truly don't understand though, besides the highlighters. The Born This Way Natural Eyes Nude Shadow Palette, which is so uncooked and underwhelming and just beige and blah, they have so many other naked nude-esque kinds of palettes. They have those two huge ones, bought both of them like an asshole. <laughs> Like, there's, there are other Born This Way nude palettes, I believe, and for $45, is there a universe where you should pay $45 for a Too Faced shadow? No, because their formula is mediocre at best. And I also saw they have this Clover Collection bronzer coming out, this Sun Puppy bronze, and I, I don't know if they're calling it a universal bronzer, but I definitely saw someone somewhere calling it a universal bronzer. There's no universe where one bronzer works for everybody. Sorry. And you're supposed to mix the whole thing together. That's that's a common thing with them. They also did the peacock one, I think, the pie one. They seem to keep releasing bronzers that only work for people with like my skin tone. No, no fucking thank you on that. No thank you on Too Faced after the whole Nikki tutorials thing and then everything else they've done before that. Something else I got a lot of questions on if I was going to buy this. This is something that I'm less angry about than the previous two things. But the Millennial Pink palette and or the Millennial Pink collection from Melt feels so underwhelming, especially off the heels of the Muerte and Vita palette and just their holiday collection in general. This is so boring and blah and undercooked and overdone. Those are almost, those are two conflicting things. Undercooked as in the colors, overdone as in these colors have been released on the market time and time again. No! 
Uh, no, no, no. I see what they were doing. I like the way that they do their palettes where it's almost like a split color story, but I don't need another coral eyeshadow and some wispy dusty pinks with a black thrown in. Even the lip glosses, I'm not gonna pull out pink lip glosses, but I have so many lip glosses. $60, no, absolutely not. Weirdly enough though, I don't know why. This is why I do these anti-hauls. Another undercooked palette. The Viseart Paris Edit palette. I was for like five seconds tempted by this and I do not know why. I have never wanted those kind of 12 pan palettes from Viseart ever. I like their all matte palettes because I like their matte formula, but they're more like commonplace, less makeup artsy palettes. Never been interested in buying. Something about this, I was like, ooh, romance, it's pretty colors. I think it's that one kind of deep burgundy shade in the middle row on the end. But I've never, there's no universe. And I have this a thousand times and the looks that I could create with this, I would have a million times over. Every palette looks the same and everything is dupable. <laughs> ooh, this just, I think there's trains and road work happening. This just came out today or was announced like today or yesterday. The pastel collection that's coming from Huda Beauty. She's doing a pastel rose, pastel mint, and a pastel lilac. I just told you all I bought all those stupid ColourPop 9 pan palettes. I, I'm so tempted again by this though because I loved her neon palettes so much and I'm wondering like, ooh, wouldn't it be nice to have pastels and neon? But like I have pastels. The swirly, metallic -y middle shades or, you know, foil shades are so gimmicky. They're just tie-dye for the sake of catching your eye and being gimmicky. This is so just... Here's the thing about the pastel trend that's happening right now. You can make any shadow a pastel shadow if you just apply it lightly, blend it out really well, put it over a white base. Like, I feel like if you're interested in a pastel look, there are ways to get that without adding new makeup to your collection if you don't have the money or the time or the resources or the space in your collection to add new palettes to your collection. Because that's the thing, I'm so tempted by these palettes and they're $30 each, so that would be $90 worth of eyeshadow if I wanted all three, which I would because I'm an annoying completionist. No thank you, Huda. And no, I don't think she's copying ColourPop because I'm pretty sure she had the colorful monotone nine pen palettes first and then ColourPop did it. I don't know. It takes months to put things into production from an idea conceptualized into a product. It takes months and months and there are people who are hired to work for these companies to predict trends. So I don't think anybody has copied anybody. I think I just showed you a whole video's worth of pastel colors like we're so good. Lime Crime also has a vaguely pastel Easter-y kind of collection coming out right now. The Fairy Garden collection it looks like. Unicorn Hair Dye which I have heard nothing good about the unicorn hair dye. And then there's also lid lights, which look like textured single shadows. Those are interesting, but do I need them? Absolutely not. And I don't like single shadows and little compacts like that because I would rather have just the pan and put it in a palette. That's just me personally. Glosses are tempting, especially the mint green one because I doubt I could pull out a mint green gloss right now. We'll see if I buy that. The hair color, the body shimmer. No, I don't need to look like a sparkly fairy. And if I wanted to, I mean, I kind of, if I was going for fairy glitter farts all over my body, I have the means to do that without buying a whole new collection. Again, like I just said. Yeah, everything I have bookmarked is some kind of wisp of color bullshit. <laughs> I could keep going on and on, but I think the last thing I want to talk about is something that I talked about in the last anti-haul and I should have covered it when I talked about Jeffree Star earlier, but the conspiracy palette. I know that we've, you know, we've crossed this bridge already. Dare I say we've even burned that bridge already, but I know a restock, a surprise restock happened and I'm pretty sure a full restock is supposed to happen in March. My truest plea to all of you, if you're still on this conspiracy bandwagon, I mean, you do what you want with your own money. If you truly love and want this palette and you've been waiting for it to come back, that's fine, you do you. I will say though, if you forgot that this collection existed and when it comes back in stock are suddenly gonna be reminded and have FOMO again, maybe that's a good reason why you shouldn't buy it and that's why I kind of wanted to include it at the end of this video because I know this is going to happen. I know a lot of people who got caught up in the hype the first time around and didn't get their chance to get it. There's probably a, a number of you guys that forgot about it at this moment because 
it doesn't seem to be that exciting of a palette. I've seen it in person multiple times now and I'm never impressed anytime I see it. I don't see a lot of people showing it in videos. I don't see Shane showing it in a lot of videos. I'm sure like when the restock of the Sailor Moon Colourpop thing happens, like same thing. This is something that I've learned being on like an unofficial low buy since I've moved is that there are so many times when I see an initial thing and I'm so excited about it, but just not being in a position where I can spend a lot of money on makeup right now, it gives me time to stop and wait out the hype. But if I still want it by the time my bullshit money rolls in for the month, then I knew it was real and I wanted it the whole time and that's fine. But like I said, the amount of times where I'm so hyped up, I see a new thing and my brain goes, oh my God, shiny, amazing. But then a week goes by and I forget about it because I didn't have the money for it when it released. And I get my money and I decide, oh wait, I didn't need that anymore. That's been like the biggest gift that not having a lot of money right now has given me. Is it's given me some makeup patience that I so very much needed. Because it's amazing how often a release happens and I don't care about it a week later. That's fantastic. So I, my last asterisk was if you are counting the days till the official conspiracy relaunch and you know you will use it a shit ton and you know that you've been waiting the seconds fine, but don't get caught up in the whole like, I need to have it because it was such an important thing and everybody else has it and what if I miss it? Fuck that. Do you like this makeup? Do you like any of this makeup that I've talked about? If you genuinely like it and you'll get use out of it and you cannot dupe it, and it makes you happy, fine. You do, you were all adults. If not, there's your answer, isn't it? You didn't need it, don't buy it. Those are all the things that I'm gonna be anti-hauling. There, there are a ton more things that I'm gonna anti-haul, but this video does need to be an hour long. Let me know what you think about this stuff. If you're anti-hauling stuff that I didn't talk about in this video, leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, if you like anti-hauls, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spookless and Fat Hips, my Twitter, at Spooky Lacey, dare I say my TikTok, also at Spooky Lacey. All of this information will be linked down below. Oh, you can also listen to me on the Half Cousins podcast. That's a fun time. Do that as well. <laughs> also will be linked down below. But that's really all I got to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys! <laughs>